What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Tia, and I am back with another video. Um, today is kind of a weird slash serious slash sad video. Sad video. Not like sad, like something actually happened, but just emotionally sad for me. Um, and it's strange. Um, so I'm going to say this morning, um, I had a dream. And it was a dream of that I was at my boyfriend's funeral. Like, it felt so real. It was like, I felt the emotions. I thought it really happened um, until I woke up and it was a dream, of course. Like, it was just like, I vividly remember what happened. And um, I was crying. I was crying. I, and I found out I was pregnant. And I was telling his mom and his brother, like, I'm pregnant and all of that and it was just like I really felt like it was that it actually happened and I was just like scared and like and shocked and just like I'm like this can't be and so I got when I got up I was just nervous because I felt like it really happened so I looked it up I'm like what does this mean like what does it mean when you're dreaming of someone's funeral funeral and your boyfriend's funeral and according to google it can mean several reasons it doesn't necessarily mean that some that he's going that the person's going to actually die but it mean it's like a symbol a um, symbolic reason uh and he had and google had like several reasons um like one of them was it can mean um that you're hovering hovering or i guess um burying some resentment or anger towards someone or yourself i guess um excuse my ashy hands um and another reason could be an ending of a relationship or um like let going of the past is it can mean like a symbol of letting go of either someone or something and it also can mean um that um you could be letting go some some negative habits. So it, it's like several reasons. Then it has other, like if you was dreaming of, of a friend's funeral or your own funeral, they had several meanings about that. So um, I was just putting two and two together. I'm like, well, does this mean that it's telling me that I need to let this relationship go? Because I have been having like some, like the doubts, not just just the launch because of the longevity of our relationship we've been together for 14 years and we are not married and we are not we don't have children and i know it's like social media has a lot to do with my doubts because all i see is you know people that i went to school with and people that i've just known along the way have gotten married have children of their own and we are still stuck in the same situation and i know people be telling me you can't you know go by what you see because everything you see is not glitter and gold um everybody has their own moment in life it's just not your time yet like i just keep hearing the same old same old and me and him talked about it and he also felt like social media is always is is basically like evil in a way because it's like it's painting a picture of something that looks like it's all um peaches and cream but we don't know what they're dealing with behind closed doors and that can be true but it's like we've been together for like 14 years why haven't we you know made any plans now have we talked about it yes we've talked about it yes we do want to get married but it hasn't happened yet and a lot of it stems from financial reasons like i work in a position where i don't get paid a lot of money and i'm literally living from paycheck to paycheck because i'm trying to pay off a car i'm trying to get out of debt and all of that and it's like i barely can save and i don't live on my own right now because where I live, where I live, it's very expensive. So, um, to live on your own, that's why my mother moved out of the city. Um, it's just very expensive, and I want to live back in my city. I love my city. I take pride in my city. I don't like live. I don't like staying where I'm staying now because this is not where I'm from. And I like. I love my city. I mean, people 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, some people, you know, are fine with moving away, but I'm not, I'm not fine with that. I, even though it's only like 10 minutes, 20 minutes away from where I, where I'm from, but still it's not where I'm from. And I want to move back to my hometown, but it's very expensive. Where so he still lives in the city. Um, and he, but I, he's in a, a place where, I don't feel comfortable, you know, staying there right now because of the living, because of the condition of the, of the place. Um, it's very, it is an old house and, you know, he grew up in that house, so he's used to it. I'm not, I didn't grow up in that house, so I'm not used to its surroundings. I like a certain, I like to live in a certain way of living and, you know, I'm just not ready to live in that house in that condition right now. He understands that. But sometimes it just ha it just weighs on me. It's just like I just get jealous and angry because I see other people living the life that I want to live. And it's like, why is it taking us so long to live that life? Um, and I know that we're both working and we're both trying. We're both like saving up. Well, he's saving up more because he makes more money than I do. But like we, we're both trying to get out of debt. We're trying like we don't want to enter a marriage in debt or in a lot of debt. Cause that's a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for divorce. A lot of divorces are because of financial reasons, because of miscommunication and all of that. We don't want to go through that because we are anti-divorce. So we want to make sure when we get married, that it's the right way that we are. We're not going to be perfect, of course, but at least, you know, have some type of financial stability. Um, I mean, I could like where my profession is. I'm a teacher assistant. Do I want to be a teacher? It was, it's like up and down at this point. I I have different emotions about it. Like I do a part of me wants to be a teacher. A part of me doesn't want to be a teacher. The part that doesn't want me to be a teacher is several reasons. I'm either, I'm lazy. I don't want to do the work to become a teacher because I've already went to college. I, I just didn't go to college for education. I went for social work. But social work didn't work out for me. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. I did it. I don't even know. I did it because my friends was, you know, I was just being a follower. And look what happens. But um, I don't feel the need that I need to go back to school to become a teacher when I have eight years of experience working in the classroom. I've seen it all. I've done it all. As an assistant, I go a bit above and beyond my um, credentials as an assistant because I do teacher lead teacher things. And, um, I, to be honest, you know, I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but that I have taught better than actual teachers that took, went to school for teaching and that actually took the exact, the praxis and all of that. I've, I've done a way better job than them. And I haven't even done none of those things because I am very childlike and I know what children like and, and want to do. I put myself in the, in their shoes versus teachers that have the credentials just teach. They just do the book stuff. No, I actually put myself in their shoes and that's how I become successful and engage. And that's how the children engage with me more than the actual teacher, because I know what they like, because I have, I'm child, I have a child like mine. So I know what children like and what they don't like. And they like engaging things. I don't go by the book anymore because it's just boring. And there's some, most of those teachers do. And that's why they don't get. They get the reaction that they get from kids, which is either playing a lot while they're teaching, you know, not paying attention, all of that. I, re I mean, not saying that I don't have my bad days. I do. But most of the time I do a great job at what I do. And I feel as though if you can't promote me for that, then I don't want it. And then like nowadays in the school system, they suck the, like the peep, the, the, the head. Um, I don't know what you call them. But the head, the people that's in charge of the school school systems, they uh, suck the fun out of teaching. They want you to be a robot. They want you to say to say what they want you to say. They they keep coming in, observing you, making sure you hit this point, that point, that point. Like if I can't be a teacher, if I can't be my authentic self, and if I can't get through to the children by the way I, you know want to teach then I don't want to do it I'm not going to be a slave for you I'm not going to you know be your puppet and that's exactly why I don't want to teach full-time like you know a lead teacher it's just unnecessary things that come along with it that that's just it doesn't make it any better 
It doesn't. It really makes it worse. It makes teachers drown, dread coming to work. It takes the fun out of it. And then the kids still, you know, doing there's no improvement in the children. Really. I mean, the only thing that I say that is beneficial is that they are using critical thinking skills. But other than that, what else is it doing benefiting them? Nothing. Like, if you can't be your authentic self, because children are smarter than people think. They can tell when they really, when you're really into them, like, not like when you're really engaging with them and re that you really like them or not. They know. They can tell. If you, if, I mean, they can tell when you're fake or when you're, basically, they can tell if you're fake or, um, or, um, authentic to them. And I'm just like, I just don't want to do it. And then the other part that I want to do, because I'm good at it. That's why. And I mean, and also I just feel as though my patience has ran thin and I, and I, I don't want to teach knowing I don't really have the patience anymore. And then I don't also want to teach because of the money. If I'm teaching because I'm because of the money, then it's not, then you're, then you're basically setting yourself up for failure and the children, because it should just be about the children, not the money. And I, I, I know that my priorities are not in order to be teaching right now. So no, I don't. What I really want to do is work in an office. And then I know it's simple, but that's just what I like to, I've always had a passion for just being, you know, an a, a office assistant or administrative assistant and work my way up from there because I just like working in the office. But every time when I apply, I don't get hired because I've been in the same educational system for so long that it kind of like um, prohibited me from getting experience working in the office and I don't have the experience to do it. So if anybody sees this video and they have an opening for an office position in um, the Washington, D.C. area, then, you know, let me know. Hit me up on social media um, or on this or on YouTube because um, I'm really, really like desperate, to be honest. I'm really desperate. And um, but yeah, back to the 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 um, dream, like. I don't know. Like, I just, I don't know. I think it's because I have a lot of anger build up and a lot of like hostility, like, um, from not being married and comparing everybody else's relationship to mine. And most of the people that are married been only together for a couple of years to a couple of months. And it's like, but we've been together for a long time and we have a solid, like, foundation and we have a solid communication um we we communicate about a lot of things that's what keeps us you know together versus those people barely know each other and we barely know each other and it's 14 years but i'm saying that they barely know each other and they already starting a life together so it's just a lot of resentment towards him and i think maybe that's the reason why I, i'm having these dreams because i want more for us and it's not happening and i'm you know angry about it to, i'm angry at myself i'm angry at him i'm angry at the world so I'm assuming that's why I'm having these dreams because I don't think it's because I should end the relationship because I don't, it's not really nothing bad that's in, in our relationship to for me to end it. The only thing that will cause me to end it is the fact that we're not married yet and we're not, we never made it official yet. That would be the only reason because neither one of us are like fooling around with other people or, you know, none of that stuff, um, no abuse or nothing like that. Um, yeah, we argue, but that's every, every relationship does. I mean, but you have to be strong enough to come overcome that. And I feel like we have, we have that. So it's not that I just think it's just things that I want more in our relationship that we haven't gotten to yet. And then also my resentment of not having a job, my dream job and, you know, not having no money, basically, and just like watching everybody else doing better. And I'm still stuck. So it's just I think it's just a resentment thing. So if you can give me if anybody can give me more insight on that, please comment below, share, like, leave a message, all of that good stuff and view my other videos and tell me what you think and give me more ideas. All right. See y'all later. I should be back with another video maybe next weekend, like next Saturday or something. All right. Peace.